Hi guys, um, today we're going to be talking a bit about the phenol red carbohydrate broth that we're going to be using in the lab. So our phenol red carbohydrate broth, or the PR broth, is a differential medium that is set up to have only one type of sugar or one type of carbohydrate within the medium itself. Um, it also has a little inverted tube, what we call a derm tube. I'll just show that to you guys real fast. That little tube in there, and we'll talk about why that guy is important here in a, in a minute. Now, inside of the media, again, we only have one type of carbohydrate. And one thing to really pay attention to when you guys go to grab the tubes is that you make sure to label which tube you're grabbing. So, for example, this is a glucose tube. This is a sucrose tube, and this is a lactose tube. As you can see, they look almost exactly the same. They have ever so slight differences um, in the variation of the red that they are. But th again, they look almost the same. Once you guys pick them up, I can't really tell the difference between them. So it's standard practice that before you start picking up the tubes, make sure you have your tags ready so you can tag the tubes real fast before you actually get started. So just kind of a, a heads up on that. Um, inside of the tube, on top of our one specific sugar that we have, we do also have the pH indicator phenol red in it. And phenol red will be yellow, generally below about 6.8 to 6.6. .6. And from about that 6.8 to 8, it's going to have varying degrees of sort of being a peachy color, to more of a pinkish, to a red, and then eventually a purple color. So kind of with that in mind, let's go ahead and talk a bit about how the phenol red broth uh, works. Basically, if any bacteria that are grown in the broth can ferment the specific type of sugar that is in the broth, it will create an acidic byproduct. And that acidic byproduct is going to lower the pH of your tube, eventually turning it yellow. So kind of like these guys here in our, in our video. The other thing that we can note is the production of gas. So the little derm tube can pick up the gas. And basically, if I look at my two tubes here, so again, both of these <clears throat> have been grown. And if you look at the one over here, you will notice how there's an ever so slight little gas bubble inside of there. So, whereas on this one, there's no gas bubble. So the one that has the gas bubble in it, again, we would say that it's positive for gas. And generally the rule of thumb with that is that the gas bubble has to be at least 10% of the derm tube. So I ran out of room here on my, uh, my tray here. But if we look at this guy here, where are we at? You can see how there's just an ever so slight little bubble in there, but that is not big enough to be considered a positive result. So just kind of be aware of that, that when we look for gas, it does have to be at least 10% of the tube. Now, the other thing we have to worry about with our phenol red broth is that there is going to be some degree of amino acids in there, and certain bacteria will be able to break those amino acids down into alkaline products. So what can end up happening is your tube might end up turning this sort of pinkish purple color. This tends to happen if we have a long incubation periods. And it tends to happen normally if you already have a positive result that then reverts as these protein products are being, uh, or amino acids are being broken down basically. So when you guys, you know, inoculate them, when you come back to score them and look at your results, again, if they look kind of the standard red, that's gonna be a negative. If you have your yellow with no gas in it, it's gonna look kind of like that. If you have your yellow with a pronounced bubble, that's gonna be positive for fermentation and positive for gas for your specific um, carbohydrate. And again, if it looks kind of uh, pinkish purple, it is gonna be positive for fermentation, but it's also gonna be positive for reversion. So just kind of keep that in mind. And in terms of inoculating your tubes, you can just do a standard uh, broth to broth inoculation is fine. If you have your sample on a plate or a slant, you can inoculate from those as well. But that should cover the information that we need to know about our phenol red carbohydrate.